Hello, we are here, the ladies of Rewatch and Wine. I'm Rhea, Trifa, and Lynn. And we're here to bring to you our book to movie adaptation review of Black Cake. Cake, Black Cake, Black Cake. Uh, Black Cake was written by Charmaine Wilkerson, and the adaptation was produced by Oprah, but also on to Hulu. Exactly. And what are we drinking today? Let's try this out, both sides. That is Cooper's Hawk Riesling. Riesling, my favorite. I feel like they owe us a lot of money about right now because <laughs> we do a lot of promoting of these bottles. So that's what we're going to have today. Um, so let's get started. Have a little convo about the book Black Cake. Well, the book was very slow to get started for me. I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be ridiculous. But as the story went on, I, I fell in love with every single character in the story. And I started to appreciate the detail. But the way that they bounced from the story of each character and how it all blended together, I love books that do that. I think it's brilliant. I was the exact opposite. My I could not keep up. The bouncing back and forth of each character in each timeline and then each character within the timeline. <laughs> I didn't know what year what was for a while. I was struggling. And then eventually I was like, you know, I'm going to listen for context mm -hmm. and see where it kind of gets me. And then I kind of knew what was going on, but then I had to figure out who they were referring to again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The people's names is what confused me. And then who was actually where and when. But I mean, once I got the hang of who was who and the major characters, I got it together. I think the background story about the Jamaicans the Asian Jamaicans was really interesting. Very interesting. So I'm so glad you brought that up because my good friend who is Asian and Jamaican, her whole family fell in love with this show. They didn't read the book, but she said that everybody, you know, was calling around and texting on the, the family group text messages. And they were like, did you guys see Black Cake? Did you see Black Cake? So she shared with me that so her parents were immigrants. But her parents, her father's father, actually owned a shop very similar to the Lynn family in the movie. Well, they, she said they had pictures. And so she was looking at the pictures that she'd never seen before of her family's shop. And so it was very nostalgic. Like their family loved this series just because of the, you know, the immigration of the Asians to um, the Asian population to Jamaica. Well, that's, that's interesting. Her. That means the authenticity of it was was. Um pretty well depicted. She then. said that. She said that it was so true, just how people were thinking, the thoughts, even how some of them were treated. So the family definitely related to it. But from their standpoint, the accents were horrific to them. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, I thought the accents were bad too. I was like, I wouldn't know because I know I don't know authentic Jamaican accents, but she was like, they all had talked about how they had to push their way through the series because the accents were so bad. I could hear it fade and then come back yep. and like certain words they would really try to emphasize. And I'm like, I, I don't have the best like ear for it, but I could tell it was off. But I was just like, oh, y'all are y'all are reaching for here. But, <laughs> OK, but it's so crazy because before I met her, I didn't know about the the, the Asian immigration into Jamaica. And I just remember meeting her family and so many of them, they, you know, they they have the appearance of being Asian, but they got these thick Jamaican accent. And I'm like, wait, what's, what's happening here? So it was anyway, it was an interesting dynamic. And I told her, I was like, I was thinking about you when I was reading this book and watching the movie, because it just reminded me of, you know, all of her family. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I love the story. I love the story too. I, I mean, it, you know, I got into it, thought I was out there in the water swimming and everything, but it's just, Kavi, did you have a good time in the water? Yeah, it just, <laughs> the whole, you know, I'm always stuck with the whole marry somebody off. Like, that just irritated the crap mm -hmm. out of me. So, not to cut you off, but I completely, like, forgot that aspect from the book when I was watching the uh, series. And I was like, what? Marrying people off. And then I had to remember that I was envisioning that scene current day, mm -hmm. not back in, I think, what, the 70s or 60s? Mm -hmm. And being, like, you know, the man ran the house and 
family and all that. And so I was like, don't be marrying people off. And then I remembered I was in the wrong decade. Yeah. And not just marrying you off. I'm not marrying you off because, you know, whatever. I'm marrying you off because I got a debt. A debt. And then to someone who's just horrible, like, you know what that man was about to do to your daughter. Like, just break her. Ugh. Anyway. And then how about her best friend and all she was going through and uh, oh, having, to, ha- having to hide her true self? It just, yeah, it she was said sad. It's dangerous for you to speak like that. And that's just, I mean, that was the, the times and the culture, but still, I just was, how do you like keep your friends safe, but mute them at the same time? Yeah. And I like the series showed that struggle. The book didn't really show it as much, but the series really spent a lot of time on her apologizing for that and then just sort of the struggle she had um, with trying to protect her friend, but also silence her. So do you want to talk about the movie a little bit now? Or I think we've been talking about it. <laughs> we have been yeah. really cool. Well, on. I just want to say that, okay, so we know that there were significant amount of differences between the book and the series. Mm-hmm. And the series didn't complete the story. And so for me, unless there's going to be a season two of the series, which for right now, I don't think there's going to be. My disappointment in the series is that the book brought closure to every aspect of the story. It brought closure mm-hmm. to us about the mom and what happened. It brought closure. It actually brought better closure between her and her best friend because the book allowed them to meet up and interact before she died, before Covey died. And so that brought closure to me because they were able to reunite as a friend, as friendship. So there's these little things that I thought the book allowed us to sort of close the book and be like, oh, everything going to be all right. (laughs) And the movie left me hanging on so much stuff. And then they changed the storyline up a little bit because the best friend didn't get to meet Covey before she passed away or didn't get to interact with her. Yeah. And then kind of felt upset about it, which I would too. You can't watch me all this time and not even come to see me. And then the mom, I don't know why I got somehow confused probably in the book, but I thought they found something about the mom in the book. They found something about the mom and didn't the kids go meet the granddad? Yes. That's what I'm saying. It brought closure. They met the grandfather Got a little bit of peace with him, but kind of saw who he was. And then he got to meet his grandkids. And yeah, with the mom, the book brought closure because it said that she slipped and fell on the falls Mm -hmm. and they found her body and she was a Jane Doe body. And I think it was the attorney that ended up doing the research for that to figure out what happened to the mom. Maybe the mom's story will be completed in uh, season two. Season two. That's what I'm hoping because they need to finish that out. And I think there could be some more twists and turns. Well, the series added some stuff that could be some twists and turns that did not exist in a book. So evidently there's this big story behind Mabel's first husband and why she was lying to her son about the first husband. And then it sounds like it's going to be a twist about who Mabel's real father was or biological father. And so if there is a season two, I feel like it's going to take us in directions that are not necessarily in the book, but I hope it brings closure to those other things. Like you got to get some closure to the mama and the kids need to meet the grandfather. Hopefully yeah. they keep him yeah. alive. Yeah. And Pearl. Pearl was still alive too, right? When they went back but to you saw the that. Yeah, Pearl was mm-hmm. still alive, but you saw how it ended. It made it look like somebody was going to kill Pearl. Remember when she was walking off in the boat? I mean, walking off from the people coming behind her or something. It made it seem in the like, car, yeah. Yeah. Like it 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 like, yeah. I don't remember that. That was in the series? When she first series. said that she was not quitting, but she's like, well, I always stayed and worked here and fed you for mm-hmm. Covey, but now that Covey's gone, I'm not staying. And then she walked out of the house. And he's like, well, how am I going to eat? And maybe you should have thought about that a long time ago. Oh, and, okay. And then a I car kind of yeah. rode behind her because, you know, it's obvious they probably thought, like, she was a, a suspect, the dad, Covey. Like, it's so many suspects in the story of the murder of the idiot. Mm-hmm. So that's why I was thinking maybe they're going to switch that storyline a little bit. Let be messed up if she died, but yeah, I hope not. But uh, I mean, all the other little details, the jar in the black cake that they found. I mean, I'm glad that they stay true to a lot of that. And quite frankly, the majority of the story was mm-hmm. was on point. Except for Bernadette, the daughter, like they switched the personalities of the brother and the sister a little bit because he was the really needy, whiny one about listening to the tape. And I thought in the book, 
it was more the girl that was like, I can't listen to this and walking away. He did a little bit, but I think the the balance was switched. I, I agree with that. So I'm curious as to why they made him the whiny one. I love how they did the love story of the parents. Like I loved how they did that whole love story and then just showed them kind of sitting, chilling, having a good time and just so happy that they came together. Yeah. The way they did that was so cool. Oh, Covey's parents or Covey? I mean, Covey. I'm sorry, Covey. Covey and her husband. Yeah. I did too, because I imagined, especially the scene of Gibbs Gibbs doing the protests and her seeing him from across the street. I was emotional reading that because I just thought that I wasn't crying, but I just (laughs) felt the emotion, the power of that scene. And they brought it to life in the series. It was that that was good for me. And it's timeline wise, I couldn't remember because I told you I had my whole timelines askew. In the series, it was when she got off the, was walking on the street and saw him at the protest. I thought she was kind of like traumatized from the assault, Mm -hmm. but I didn't realize that it was from giving birth and then having your child ripped from you and all that. So that was like, not a shocker, but like, Oh yeah, I did read that. Mm-hmm. I told you I was mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. every direction. Yeah. I could see how you could get lost in a timeline. But that. what was his secret? Because I noticed yes. remember he kept talking about his secret, his secret, his secret. And I said, Well, maybe he has a wife and a child, or he has a child somewhere. Because they kept talking about that. But I, his secret was that he was at the wedding. They no, were trying I, to save her. It was more than that because yeah. that's what I was feeling too, but I, I Hmm. Man, I had it yesterday, <laughs> and then I forgot. Because in my mind, I kept saying, "Are oh, they just act like he's with somebody else when they first met, and she was just like, you won't believe, you know, there's too many things that have gone on. He was just like, we all have secrets. We all have secrets. Like, he was really harping on the fact that he had some sort of a secret. Oh, so in the series, I don't know why, when she said that to him, he said, hey, that's when he started saying he was at the wedding and he was a coward. And she said, I forgive you but you need to forgive yourself. Mm-hmm. For some reason, I thought that was a secret, but I guess it could have been, but I just, to me, I'm like, what? But talk about like a romance. I know, I loved it. it was like, really my nice. goodness, that he just uprooted and was like, yo, okay, we'll name change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh, you believe me? And he was like, oh, nope. Like, I'm not doing that again. Ever, ever, ever leaving you again. But it's her crazy. story, oh my gosh, Covey just broke my... I thought the actress that played Covey mm. did such Mia a good job of her emotions. What's her name? Mia Isaac. She, emotion, like, I feel like I'm not, wasn't like Rhea, didn't become <laughs> her, but I felt her scenes. She just, she did a really good job. Down to even when she was faking the marriage, like, she was beautiful with all this makeup on and it was just smiling, but you could see nothing but pain in her eyes. And mm-hmm. even like going through like job interview after job interview and not even getting the interview, but knowing her social like class and that they didn't want to hire her because she's a person of color. Mm-hmm. And just like seeing that heartbreak on her face, mm-hmm. but not letting the oppressor see it mm-hmm. type thing. Yeah. Now, I was so happy when she got the job and always being the outcast. It's just, oh, so, I was so happy for her, the job too. The, I didn't remember the other person in the office telling her the same thing happened to her. I don't recall that in the book either. I think that was an addition. Yeah, I don't recall that, but I don't recall a lot because I was putting in different decades. <laughs> <laughs> but her girlfriend, um, Enola, the person's name she took, was it Enola? Eleanor. 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 El- Eleanor was such a good friend to her. Like for her to lose the person that was just Finally, I was able to, like, you could have your secrets, but I'm still here. Yes. I was like, oh, my gosh, what a best friend. And to lose her in that train, that was that was just too much. That woman went through too much in her life. I kind of felt like, you know, she kind of was the one that pushed Eleanor. Let's go. So it probably felt terrible. Yes. Yeah, they, they didn't did. actually go to Scotland. <laughs> they wouldn't have been on the train. And mm-hmm. right. mm-hmm. a lot of the things wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Oh, that was just all. Okay. So... I guess we talked about the main character, but you guys want to talk about the rest of the cast? So, first of all, the matching between Covey as a kid and Eleanor as an adult, I thought it was the same person with just like a heavy makeup. I did too. Oh, it's not. I did too. According to um, IMBD, it is not. It is two different people. Wow. Now that they matched that so was perfectly. amazing. They need to do that. On you know what? Who else they match? Per- they match really well, Mabel. Because I was wondering, how are they going to make this white girl look like her? But she did look like her to me. They're her eyes mm-hmm. were set. And then not just like the dark hair and the freckles. But yeah, exactly. Those yeah. little details. Simon Wong? 
Yeah. Yeah, they so did a good bad. job. I bet. But this movie, who produced it? You said Oprah. 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 This movie is a prime example of how. Oh, I don't know why I thought this when was you had. I, I thought it was under, Obama's. I thought it was under their production company too, but oh, maybe it was my bad. I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. But I think it's the prime example of how when you have black directors directing black movies, they understand that a light skinned black person can't grow up to be dark skinned. Because you know how we talked about in the past when they do that and they just, nobody's paying attention. My absolute best series of the whole world is This Is Us. Okay. This Is Us. And they just jacked that up. Oh, yeah. This is what I'm saying. So, but you know, Black people know that. We know that Lynn can't grow up looking, being Whoopi Goldberg's complexion (laughs) when she's light-skinned, when she's younger. So this movie, they actually did a really good job, not only of the aging but the realistic look of the children. Yes. The children look like, the B&B look like they could be the kids of yeah. the two of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah one yeah. might have favored one more than the other, but at the same time, they look like they, they could, could actually blended from both their DNA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that they did a wonderful job with that in the complexions. And I don't know about, uh, what's her name now? What's the, what's the, I used to get the best friend's name. Bernadetta? Bunny? Bunny. Bunny. I don't know about Bunny. What? I don't know about the Bunny adult Bunny, but it was close. Complexion wise, it was fine. They just didn't look anything alike. Like her yeah. nose got really big. Everybody says I look like that woman. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody says, "Are you funny I, to the lady on?" No, I don't think you no, look like I'm that not. woman. I don't think you look like that, that woman at all. I. But um, what's the guy's name that played the attorney? Because he is, I do love him as an actor. He nails everything that you see him in. Yeah, but I can't think of his name. Mr. Mitchell in the show. But I even loved him. Like, the way he acted, you could see he was mourning his girlfriend. Glenn Turman. Yeah. But also, that kind of threw me off, because I was like, were were they, like, not, like, dating, but, like, he lost his wife, she lost her husband. Were they kind of, like, partnering up? I think he comforted comforted him at the end, because that's what he said. And then remember... He kissed her, remember? But in the book, they said that because they said um, the daughter, B, was like, they were so emotional. And then they looked, she realized, she was like, oh, he's mourning too. You know, the loss of his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And then she, in the mo- in the series, they had that scene where Covey was like, I'm so sorry for doing this for you, this stupid disease. I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and he was like, don't you apologize for nothing. Because he lost two. So, well, I guess he like lost one wife and then losing his girlfriend. So mm-hmm. I can see that when mm-hmm. to you again. But do, do you remember in the book when they were talking about their relationship and they were saying that he actually found himself attracted to her when Gibbs was still alive? Because his Correct. wife died when Gibbs was still alive. Mm-hmm. And then when Gibbs died, you know, he eased on in. Little, <laughs> he slid on in to comfort her. <laughs> And she probably needed that. But anyway, that was also a cute little love story between the two of them, even though that was short. But it was the good. The book showed a lot of passion. The book yeah. showed a lot of passion. Black love, right? That's what I was going to say. And that's what I like about the series. They really showed that. I mean, there wasn't even a lot of scenes about it, but enough that you could see they were truly in love. They, they were soulmates. Yeah. I think also in the series that I liked was the representation that like Covey losing her daughter and wanting her daughter, but also never forgetting with the daffodils that were planted Mm -hmm. outside her house and the kids had no idea B and B. They were like, oh, mom in her garden. But then after listening to the tapes, she they realized like, you know, not that she was ever like forgotten, but like Mm -hmm. because of the times and her circumstances and being a single immigrant mother in like a different country let alone continent Mm -hmm. of course she had no means Mm -hmm. but the way they showed that throughout time that she never forgot about her firstborn Mm -hmm. i love that representation yeah oh my god and the scene they snatched her up from that oh oh my god yeah from the wedding mother Mm -hmm. home oh my gosh i was so mad at that other lady the jamaican nun I know. For her. But what I really liked in the book is that they went on to say that there was like an investigation on those types of houses and it ended up shutting down. Um, again, a closure in the book. Like mm-hmm. I feel like they brought so much closure to the different mm-hmm. stories. But in the book, they didn't show the dynamic of the girls in that house. 
And yes. I like that addition of the interaction with her, of the girls in that house, especially the one girl who she kind of made really good friends Irene. with. How the two of them sort of switched. Like Irene started off, I want to be a mother. I want to have this baby. And Cubby was like, mm, I don't know. I just need to get this over with. And, and then at the end, Irene was like, I don't want to touch the baby. I don't want to breastfeed. I don't want to have to just get it away from me. It's over. And then Cubby was like, oh, no, I, I love this baby. Yeah. And so the, yeah. the, the change in the two of them, that was an addition outside of the book, but I loved it. Yeah, that was nice. That was nice. Again, the love that's there. Yeah. In the culture. She has so much love in her heart. Yeah. Not just for her baby, but her best friend. Mm-hmm. and her husband and her kids and just and, he, her- and, and even her dad and and you know she talked a lot about that like mm-hmm. she can't imagine the choice that he made yeah and if he would ever know she just she forgave him or whatever all right so y'all ready to rate this one mm-hmm. so it's hard for me to give this adaptation a full glass because i'm not happy with the ending of the series because it didn't bring closure to so many things. So I'm going to give this a long day at work. Okay, okay. You know, hmm. love it all. So adaptation-wise, I was going to give it a, a long day at work, but I'm so lost so often in the book <laughs> that it helped you. The, the series helped me understand the book. So all in all, I am going to give it a long day at work, but a long day's work, but at the same time, I kind of want to give it a full glass only because... It helped me understand it. It's a person that was does not track the timeline very well. The visual representation of the timeline from the adaptation was spot on. So I'm still going to stick with the long day of work, though. I'm giving a full glass, even though I'm mad. But hopefully there'll be a part two and close it out. And if there is, we'll be right back at The you. thing is that they're not going to be able to close out that friendship, her and Bernadetta's friendship, because they already made it seem like they didn't meet before she died. So I'm going to be mad about that. Well, Benedetta was kind of like holding some secrets. Maybe she lied to her about it. Mm. Lied to the kids about it. Could be. We shall see. Mm. So let's hope Oprah does a season two. Come on, Oprah. Burn Oprah. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Thanks Check for tuning us in. out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and not Twitter. X and TikTok. Spotify. Are we on Spotify? Yeah. We're on every single podcast platform. If you listen to podcasts, you can find us. Find us, like us, download, listen again, listen three times. <laughs> subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> Thank right, you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.